Okay, hello everyone. My name's Mustafa. I'm a UX designer here on the Chrome team. I also have Penny. Uh, Penny, you can jump in as and when you want. We're trying to get. We, we want to keep this as uh, informal as possible, uh, and just really introduce some of the stuff that we've been working on for the last year in regards to progressive web apps. Um, so, without further ado, so for the last year, we've been looking at um, exploration in like discovery. Uh, and how we can actually elevate progressive web apps to make them feel like on par with native experiences so that users can see, feel, and understand what they actually are. So some of the features which I'm going to show are all with, with that theme in mind. So like 2020 was pretty much the, uh, the ideation of, of those kind of thoughts and feelings. Um, so the first thing I'd like to cover is richer install. One thing I'd like to note is the desktop version of this was still working process, a uh, progress. So I'm gonna actually show some mocks. They are, they could possibly change, but I wanted to get give folks uh, a chance to see the sort of things that we're actually working on. Um, so what is richer install? Uh, so currently when you try to install a progressive web app, the UI you see is quite meager. And some of the things that we've been exploring is we want to be conscious about the user's web experience and not to bombard them with needless UI. But the moment we actually see that the user wants to make a, a clear choice or that they've demonstrated an interest in something, we want to be bold, as bold as we possibly can. This is to help the developer and also help the user understand the choices that they're going to make. So currently, the UI that you see when you install something, say, in this case, on Chrome on Android, it's quite minimal. It doesn't really give too much information of what's actually going on. Um, so what we've been experimenting with and what you can see now today in um, Clank, uh, sorry, Chrome, Canary Chrome, Dev and Beta uh, is this thing that we're terming richer install. And the idea is that uh, the install UI that someone sees is on par with what their mental model of what install UI should be. So the stuff that you see on the App Store, the Play Store. Mega, yes. Um, so this is this is like so what you can see here is basically a mock-up that we created, uh, but that has actually been implemented at the moment. Um, so this is like a real life example, uh, Squoosh, which is like an example that created by our developer relations team. Um, the idea is that you provide a description and also some screenshots. And this gives uh, users, again, like this on par experience with native. Um, it gives a much more clear indication of what's going on. We've also been updating string terms. So instead of add to home screen, we have the term install. Again, this is trying to meet the user where they actually are when it comes to experiences. So if you go back 15 years, the way people would install things would be CD-ROMs and going to like downloads.com. Um, for the last 10 years, we've been educating users about stores. So we want to kind of give those surfaces, uh, again, to meet their expectations. Um, so some of the things that we've actually been exploring, and this is where the experimental things that um, I might like to ask the group to see if um, what folks actually feel about this, is currently the two things that are included as a description and the actual um, screenshots. But we've been look we've looked at like different data types. Um, so for example, categories. Uh, we did explore categories, but we admit that because we didn't feel that there was much value at this point. But again, uh, it'll be interesting to hear what the group feels about having categories of the type of apps. Um, ratings is something that we explored, but we weren't too sure the best way to actually do this, because obviously we don't have a store at front. Um, install counts is another thing that we explored. Um, does anyone, I mean, I don't mind people um, taking themselves off mute and uh, or even chat in the chat, like what they feel about um, these different type of data types. Like, would you find these things interesting, useful from your point of view? If no one says anything, I'll just carry on talking. Where would you get the rating from? This is an interesting question. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I'm not sure. I mean, Perth, I mean, I don't know um, if there is like an open source rating system. I mean, there is a whole bunch of kind of worms that will, you know, um, so it'd have to be very meaningful and useful to the user. Um, but it'd be interesting to see what folks actually feel about this. Yeah, possibly the Chrome Web Store. Um, again. It, yeah, that would uh, require. I, I mean, I'm not sure how apps go into the Chrome Web Store today, so I'm not sure what the uh, the balance there 
is. I, th I think it, it does presuppose a catalog. Um, and if you know we're in a world where there's a plurality of catalogs, I think there's also this question of um, then do we show ratings from, well, if, I mean, if the user clicked the link into this web app from a catalog, it would be clear that we should probably show the ratings in the catalog that they use as the entry point. Um, the situation is different if they navigated there organically. It's, it's an interesting question. I think it ties into this, this idea of uh, having PWA catalogs in stores and enabling those and, and what, what, if anything, we should be doing to bring that about. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, an interesting one possibly to explore is like um, trusted web activities and ratings from other stores uh, or providing the API. But again, I'm not an engineer, so I'm not going <laughs> to ex like, uh, explore the, the engineering complexities there. But it'll be interesting to see what folks feel. Um, I'm assuming these videos are going to go up on YouTube, so please add comments. Um, it'll be interesting to see what the community feels about this. In terms of um, checking this out, again, if you just go to uh, Chrome Flags, and then you enable this flag, you'll be able to um, see this in action. Today, a few people I've been seeing on Twitter have actually been implementing this UI. Different companies, Twitter themselves, have actually done uh, an experiment uh, where you can actually see the installation process, which is really exciting to see lots of um, community members and like other companies em embracing this UI. So you can check it out on your own site. Uh, and again, the implementation is very simple. I mean, as a bare minimum, you need one screenshot. Uh, descriptions are not compulsory. We I've written an article which goes through the steps. It's very, very simple. It's just adding data to the manifest file. Again, I'm not an engineer, so but the article is very easy to read. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's very simple. At the moment, it's just um, Chrome on Android. So we're looking to work on the desktop equivalent, which hopefully will come soon. And this is the first time we're showing this <laughs> as a mock. So things may change, but we want to give an idea, like an indication of like the things that we're, we're working on. So hopefully um, sometime in the near future. But uh, again, we, we we're trying to make this um, experience feel very rich, hence the term richer install. Uh, and again, this will enable developers to create like great experiences. Um, does anyone have any questions or comments? I will just move on to the next thing, if not. Is everyone awake? Because <laughs> I'm not. It's nearly 1 AM. Uh, OK, so in product help. So in product help are these small little bubble wizards that appear on in Chrome. And the idea of this UI is to educate users about new features, new things that we've been working on. It's like an introductory surface. So the team wanted to explore uh, educating users about the install process, because it's slightly different on desktop and on mobile. Um, and so again, it's just like these small little prompts uh, to educate a user. So at the moment, we have this, this e exists on desktop. Um, and it works quite well. We've had a lot of feedback. Um, there's, there's been um, some good impact there, like uh, success stories there. And it's a great way just, again, to educate things, because um, we want to be cognizant that we're not bombarding users with UI when they're in an experience, because it can be quite disruptive. But obviously, when a you again, much like the richer install, when a user has indicated that they're really into something, then we want to give them that gentle push. And again, this helps the whole platform and the whole ecosystem. Because the more users start becoming um, used to this uh, install process and uh, web app UI, the more it becomes commonplace and then becomes a thing of normality. I don't think I've made any sense there, but I'm sure you understand what I'm saying. Um, this UI is triggered by our site engagement. So again, with if a user has indicated that they, they, they really like a site, so if you go to Twitter quite a lot, um, because as Twitter is a progressive web app, and you haven't got it installed, um, in product help will actually prompt again to educate you the users about that that this uh, progressive web app can be installed directly and run in standalone mode. Um, so yeah, again, the impact of this we've seen is really, really good. We've seen positive numbers. Um, users are installing this or it's engaging with, with, with progressive web apps. And again, we're in a phase where we want to just educate and make the installation of uh, web apps for a browser a normal thing, an everyday thing. Um, at the moment, we're working on the, the web equivalent, sorry, the, the, the Clank 
and Chrome on Android equivalent. Uh, this is a mock-up, so this is not live in like implementation. But again, this is hopefully coming soon um, to a browser on Android near you. Again, it's all about educating um, about progressive web apps on across the whole platform. Finally, what I want to talk about is install iconography. And this is quite important, especially for like other browsers as well. Um, last year, we did a study with about 10,000 users looking at um, install iconography and the, the previous install icon, which was this uh, plus in a circle. At the time, the terminology we we're using as the home screen, we've pivoted to more like install as like the label to use across um, both desktop and on Android. Uh, and for a, a very good reason. From the study, we found that users found this icon very confusing. Um, some confused it with the battery. Some confused it with first aid. Uh, it made sense in the context of add to home screen. But when you, you're thinking about install, users, the, the mental model of what install means to a user, this didn't really add up. So from iterate on multiple designs, uh, we came up with what you see today on desktop, uh, which is a device with uh, an arrow pointing down, again, indicating download. Because what we found is, or what we're finding most anecdotally, is the term download and install, users will use interchangeably, a bit like web and internet. Um, but it, in their mind, it kind of means the same thing. So we wanted to kind of meet the user where they already are and, again, educate them. Now, just changing an icon won't mean that suddenly everyone starts installing things. There's IPH and the richer install uh, UI, again, is to help enable and aid the icon. But um, we've seen some really good positive numbers from just this one simple change. And again, uh, we want to make things as obvious as possible to the user because it allows them to make well-informed choices throughout like their experience. Um, so this icon is launched now, so you can actually see it when you visit a progressive web app. And at the moment, we're experimenting in Canary to add iconography to like the overflow menu or the contextual menu, depending on uh, what you're familiar with, so you can actually see it there. Again, very similar, an arrow pointing just to indicate to the user that there's something that you can add to your device. Um, we still, we, uh, this is still an experiment, so we haven't got um, that much feedback from that yet. So again, these are things which are coming soon. Um, and with that, I have Q&A. I've gone very quickly, because as I promised, this is going to be very fast. Maybe one quick question is um, about the screenshots. Are, are there any concern about like app developers abusing that and, and showing misleading screenshots? I, I assume that if it's a paid app, as long as we have an easy way to return and get the, the money back and maybe leave a one-star review, maybe that, maybe that could be enough. But I don't know if you have thought about like people abusing the fact they can specify the screenshot they want and trick user, and then eventually user will grow kind of like annoyed about the whole install, install front if it becomes so, really bad. Yeah, absolutely. So when we actually were designing things, one of the things that we do in our process is we try to make um, worst case scenario and best case scenario. So oftentimes when we present these designs, it's like the most amazing, like you like Spotify, this beautiful whatever. But then we also have, okay, whoops. Ha what if someone was to fool a user into like installing a fake antivirus software, for example, or what you know, um, what what would the the possibilities be, or like something really nasty or whatever? Uh, the general consensus was a user has to go to the actual site in the first place. So what they're seeing is there's the origin is there, um, and so as of yet you can't install from a third party place. Um, so the need to uh, check on that didn't seem that. Um, important at this stage in that you know uh, a user would be familiar with where they're going. Uh, obviously, there could be unsavory things to put on there, but um, that's kind of the web, I guess. Uh, it was the general, uh, the feeling. Um, in the future, if it is possible to install progressive web apps in other places, then this could actually be a much more interesting challenge to face. Uh, and in which case, I think we might have to think of other ways to mitigate that. Like some of the exploratory things is that you show the original UI because the the original install UI is going to be there for uh, the long, the short to medium future, for now anyway. So um, yeah, does anyone else want to add from the team, Penny or Peter Beverly? 
I'm stumbling. I'm sounding like um, a politician. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I think you made a good point about um, you can always go back to the previous install font if you notice that maybe like the opt-in rate is not good, or maybe if you have reviews, if there is like way too much one-star review, then as an incentive for the developer to fix the, the problem, then you fall back to the less kind of like uh, interesting UX-wise install yeah. Yeah. yeah, so I mean, that's, at the moment, that's kind of what we're thinking. Um, just an F, as an FYI, we are running research projects at the moment to see how people react to this UI to see if it's, because we don't want to shock them. Um, and so that will help inform those decisions. Like we're looking at, is showing the origin enough? Is that full sense of security? Stuff like that, just to see if, uh, how much of these things um, make an impact. Uh, because the other thing that we have to be cognizant is people install things in all different states when they're out and about, when they've been prompted to. And so um, that's an interesting challenge to actually see how people, do people really understand what's going on? And that's the important thing. Um, hi, I have a question on the topic of people understanding what's going on. Yes. Like when I click on the install button in on, on desktop, there's no context telling me what what the feature is that this is. That there's no way for me to figure out that this is PWA without me knowing ahead of time that this is it. Um, so, and for like a medium tier user that sort of understands what installing applications is, this is confusing because I don't expect Chrome to be able to install anything like just like that. And I don't understand what this is, so I'm not going to use it. That, that's like my user story from the ways back. Have you considered adding like an explainer somewhere that's reachable or like something? Yes. So one thing that we've actually been exploring, and this come up in our research, is celebration moments with progressive web apps. Because the way we install things are so instant that, um, again, meeting the users where they are ment like mentally, it's like when people install software, there's a whole like in Windows, you see there's a progress bar, there's like flashing things. There's a whole context which may feel like an extra five, 10 seconds, but that five, 10 seconds, five, 10 seconds is educating the user about what's happening or a process, even if they don't 100% understand it. And I think with the desktop experience, we're slightly missing that, like this kind of celebration, because it's so fast, which you think is great, but because it's so fast, we miss that bit of that context. Um, so. Yeah, that's something that we're looking to explore, and you're 100% right. Um, it's a very challenging thing to do because there's that fine line of how much context do you give? Do people um, have five minutes remaining? OK. <laughs> I'll keep talking forever. Uh, Penny, you actually had something you wanted to add. Yeah, maybe on that. Um, and so I haven't actually tried the experience, so maybe it's already there. But I think. Um, an interesting aspect of the, the, the install flow with native apps, especially on Windows, is that you you end up knowing where the app went. You know where to go to get it back. I don't know if we have that on like the install flow for PWAs on desktop, but that's also one reason why like instant magic happens like so fast that you don't even know where to go. Like that that could be also confusing. So yeah, we've explored um well, we've, we've looked at some really interesting concepts of like when you install a PW on desktop, how many places do you put it in automatically? Um, but then there's a fine line of obtrusive, unobtrusive. Like when someone goes to an actual store, you know they're making a direct choice to do something. Um, if they don't 100% understand the context, to say put a shortcut or put something in the status bar or automatically, is that an acceptable thing or not is the question that we're exploring at the moment. Um, and so, yeah, the idea is like IPH will help educate users about like what these things are. Um, the richer install UI will give, again, it's bringing people to where they already are and so showing very familiar SQI to them. And then again, the celebrationary moment is something that we want to explore that, again, is an education piece. Penny, is there anything you wanted to add to that? Yeah, I, th I think the only thing I wanted to know was that we, we do have a similar problem to this on mobile in that we have this unknown period of time between when you request the install and when it actually takes place because we have to mint the APK. Uh, we don't know the exact size of the APK. 
We don't know the network speed. So, I mean, this could be 20, 30 seconds after you request the install, you might've moved on to another task. And then it's just an icon that appears on your home screen. So we're looking at um, less intrusive ways of letting the user know that something happened, still exploring UX there. But I mean, I do think this is a problem on both desktop and mobile where we need either through ceremony um, to explain what's going to happen and then to celebrate that it that it did happen when it's completed. Uh, it's, we probably only want to limit that to like first time installs or some other constraints on it to make sure that we're not doing annoying things over and over again for users. But um, more than what we have now is probably called for. We have about two more minutes. So if maybe another question or two. So um, we had a lightning talk that mentioned web annotations. And in this um, uh, talk here, we wondered about if there were things like reviews or ratings where they would be. And these seem related concepts. Yeah. And so uh, let's you know have those groups talk to each other. Yeah, no, I mean, uh, I think it would be really um, a powerful feature to have, to have ratings and, and reviews. Um, yeah, because I mean, again, this is like we want to meet users where they are uh, as much as possible. Um, so yeah, let's talk. <laughs> usually at this point in a meeting, as my teammates will tell you, I suggest me karaoke. And that usually is a signifier to say, I think the meeting's coming to a close. Um, uh, I want to say thank you for everyone um, for attending. Thank you for the questions. It's really great to hear feedback on, on these experiences. Um, feel free to uh, check us out on Twitter. Uh, we usually post stuff up. Um, and also, we're trying to add as many uh, blog posts to educate about the things that we're working on and trying to be as transparent just to share information around the community. So um, thank you all. And with that, I'd say good morning, good evening, and good night.